This is Work University, episode 46. This is Work University, and I'm Annalisa Felix. This is where I interview people from various employment backgrounds and get the inside scoop on what their job is really like. If you're just getting into the workforce or if you're curious about getting into something new, listen up. Hi, today I am talking with Farzana Nurzade, who is a Vice President of Data Science and Data Analytics. We'll get into what that means, but welcome, Farzana. Thank you. It's great to talk to you today. Great. So let's get right into it. Um, data science and data analytics, can you make it easily digestible for somebody who is not tech savvy? Sure. Yeah, happy to. Um, so data science has um and an element to it that's related to statistics and projecting what's going to happen so predictive modeling comes under data science data and and there's like a future component to the science part of it for the most part and uh data analytics is a study of what the data is telling me as a business professional so of course the applications of both analytics and data science go span across multiple industries. And I've actually had the pleasure of working in multiple industries from healthcare to fintech. And um, now I work in food and beverage. The kind of data that you're looking at and analyzing what's happened in the past falls under analytics generally. And the data science has an element of projecting what might happen based on what I'm seeing in the data, the trends I project out into the future. And a simple example for data science that everyone's familiar with is your um, net. Netflix recommended movies. So that's an example of data science. They know what you've watched in the past and which movies you've seen from start to completion. They know the speed and frequency that you binge watch <laughs> so and what kind of shows you've been watched versus the ones that you start and then you stop halfway through. So over um, a period of time, they have data science algorithms that models you as a user and gives you recommendations. That's a projection model and that's data science. The analytics would be something like used by um, similar but different, like in a YouTube environment, who to advert, what kind of products to advertise to you would be um, a use of analytics where they know um, based on your past, what uh, what kind of products they should put in front of you. Okay, so is this um, data given to you when you use a certain system that is set up for this, or do you have to kind of code and build something, or is there products out there that is out there for the everyday Joe who wants to do this for themselves? How does that work? And, and we yeah. haven't even gotten into the reading it yet, but mm-hmm. how, how does one get that? That's a really good question um, because there are multiple sources. So the the response is going to be multi-level. Every business generates their own data. Um, They generally do a good job collecting it. So if we stick with the same kinds of examples, um, Netflix knows what you've watched on their system. If you're in a family of four Oftentimes, people create their own profile so they can pick up where they last left off. So that's an example of of self-generated data. Oftentimes, companies um, enrich their data with other data. So going back to the uh, YouTube example, um, there are advertising companies and data collection companies, Google and YouTube and Facebook are some of the big names where they understand who you are and model, not specifically a user, there's privacy um, uh, laws in place. So they'll model something like, you know, age 20 to 25, female, uh, living in California or versus living in New York, and they'll model who this person generally is and what they might be interested in. So you can purchase that kind of data from some of these big players. Um, And there's, of course, a lot of other companies that collect data, process it, and make it available to someone else to purchase. So oftentimes companies 
synthesize their own data plus um, enrich it with um, purchase data. So do you have experience in creating, because it seems like you've done this for a little while, um, creating these systems to search, or do you uh, mainly focus on reading, interpreting, and providing reports to whoever's requesting? So systems that search, what do you mean by that? Like the data collection systems? Yeah. Is that what they're called? Data collection systems? It's just a, a term I put together, but I guess yeah, I mean, I've never been in the business of reselling data to another party, but I have in many of my past jobs created data collection systems so that we can use it for our own internal business, either just understanding who our users are or um, using it to know usage patterns for product managers to def- create products that will be most um, accepted or um, appreciated by their user base. Okay, I'm going to go off a little bit here. So if I opt into something, there's probably a fine print somewhere else saying that your data is going to be X, Y, and Z, and I really don't even know about it. Is that correct? That's true. Um, Most iPhone users have noticed over the past year or so, you're constantly being asked, um, do you want to share, um, like, let's just say Google Photos, right? something a little bit more sensitive I'm using in this example, Um, it'll ask you, is it okay for Google Photos to share data about your location, let's say, with other apps? And then you can opt in or opt out for something like that. Um, And then me as a consumer, I think through like, do you need to know my location information? Yes or no. And then am I comfortable with you sharing that with other apps? So I'll consider the brand and and the integrity of the brand often. So Google Photos, I like to know, I I like getting those emails that tells me you want to see your past month, where you've been and where you've taken photos. So I get personal benefit from that. And I do allow them to track that because I'm comfortable with it and I enjoy it. I get a lot back. Um, If they want to share my location, I probably wouldn't because I'm like, Who else wants to know where I'm taking pictures of my kids, for example, or eating out? I'm going out to dinner with some friends. No one else needs to know that. So I'll be um, selective. Okay. But my Uber, I will always let Uber know where my location is. Please, please pinpoint my location to pinpoint precision because I want you to know that. So now that we understand a little bit more Uh, what data science and data analytics does. If you're looking to advance your career or learn new skills, then check out our range of online tech classes offered by The Moving Teacher. Visit us soon at themovingteacher.com. Let's look more at at your job and or the job of a data science professional. So I'm sure there's a lot of different uh, positions that are available for these professionals. And I say these professionals because for me, since I'm not a numbers person, it's hard for me to grasp a lot of it. And so it's like, you know, a lot techie, but um, is it spreadsheets? Is it like, what it, what kinds of things are businesses asking you for? You said uh, the trends, you said where we are now and to uh, look at future growth or, you know, a story to tell a story about, you know, uh, consumers, but what else are we doing? Like you're having meetings, you're talking with um, your clients, what other things are are behind the curtain that we wouldn't know about that we want to know about data analytics professionals? Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, So I mentioned earlier, like statistics and, and higher order math is definitely helpful. Their logic is very, very helpful. Um, so like my personal background, I have a, a undergraduate degree in computer science. And with that, I had to take a lot of math classes. One thing, like when I was younger, the, the concept of data science wasn't really what it is today. Um, so I'll also add in, I'll sprinkle in a, a piece of advice in here for, for folks um, who are listening to this. I think it's good to think through what industry and what specialty you really enjoy. And then if you're interested in data science, 
dive deep into the data of that industry. Like I mentioned before, I have experience in healthcare, I have experience in fintech, and and um, I have uh, two companies that I've worked for that are in um, food and beverage sales. And like, if you are someone who enjoys biology, you can be a data scientist in the field of biology. If you're someone who enjoys finance, you can be a data scientist in that field. If you enjoy logistics, they need a lot of data scientists in logistics. So it's it's good to have a dual aspect or a dual major or dual specialty because that makes you far more valuable and you can kind of choose the end industry or what you're passionate about. You can be a data scientist in the field of entertainment. Um, so or, or sports, there's a lot of sports stats and data scientists who specialize in that. So it's a cool hybrid and I recommend having um, like a hybrid focus. And then to get back to like your question, um, for an analyst, sometimes their data is in spreadsheets, but often the source for these massive data sets are gonna be in some sort of data warehouse or or structured data set, or even an unstructured data set, but it's going to be far more technical and, and more massive. Like as time proceeds from the late 90s till now, like the, the data volume growth has expanded considerably. So um, spreadsheets are good for a small data set, but uh, someone who is going to get into this field has to learn the skills of SQL so that they can pull data directly from different databases. Um, and then to, to get back to the rest of the question, as, as I've moved into management, I've spent more, I spend more and more time in meetings and understanding what clients want, what my business and corporation wants, what their strategy is, and tie together the work that my team does in, in terms of really doing the data analysis or building data products. But I think early on, there's a fair amount of individual analysis and coding and, and going through work kind of on your own. So um, so it's, it's good to kind of be prepared for uh, the various phases in this kind of work. So if somebody really likes working with numbers and spreadsheets and things like that, this is, this is for you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it's also a lot about like creativity and curiosity. So this isn't like you're you're not a an accountant. And for me personally, I don't like accounting. <laughs> so it's different because it it's about looking at the numbers and the spreadsheets, but with like a creative mind thinking, what does this mean? What should I tell my management to do? Um, how can I look ask these same questions a different way and look at a different set? and maybe get a different answer or a different data story based on the data. So, um, and that's what drew me to it as well. I am a very curious person and I enjoy the story of what comes out of it and, and the value of what you learn from it, um, not just a strict calculation like an accountant. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how you got to where you are now. And, you know, a general look at your career path and and also then think of any like bumps in the road that you or to any turns because, you know, our career can shift at any moment. So is there anything you can say about that? Yeah, sure. Um, um, so I got my undergraduate degree in computer science and I got quickly pulled into databases because I love that work. I enjoy organization and analytics and design. So I, I designed data models um, for a few startup companies and then um, found a really great place to work for a long time at Blue Shield of California. And that was um, my first um, uh, healthcare company. Um, and then I moved into project management at that time, like the, the data scientist in that healthcare company for like an insurance company, Blue Shield of California, they were called statisticians and they were called um, actuary department. And, and, and this is like late 90s, early 2000s. The concept of data science has kind of taken shape in the past 10, 15 years. 
And so today, I think I think they would probably have a different title. <laughs> and so that was risk analysis for um, for health conditions and health concerns. And that's what the data science and that team did. But I was in the software department at that time. I was designing um, databases for claims, for the user interface, for logging in as a consumer to check on the client or consumer portal. I forgot what they called it now. Um, and and check uh, like uh, doctor reviews, databases for that, and articles on 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 health. Um, so there was a big separation between me and the data science in that in, in that organization. And then I moved into fintech, and um, the product that I um, managed there, I moved into product ma- project management, and then into product management from there. Um, and that product. Uh, working on the software team, but getting deeper, deeper into the data was like a, a an investment product for retirement and other kinds of investments, and and it was a data science product because it included um, projections into like what your holdings would be worth into the future for when you retired and the percent chance that you were going to get your goal to be able to retire on time. And it also gave you suggestions on a different model for how to invest your money such that you're more likely to get your goals. So um, moved back into data science. I went back to school late in life um, after raising kids. So um, I went back and got an MBA and learned a lot more about data science and data analysis. Um, from a like statistician kind of uh, skill set, so it was so there are that. MBAs with that direction. There are now, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that wouldn't have been an option for me when I graduated college in '98. That wasn't a term. <laughs> and the analyst at that time, the data analysis that we do, it was kind of called data mining, looking through the database, looking for um, nuggets of information and finding patterns. So one thing to note <laughs> is, as you grow your career is that the industry in technology moves very fast and it's important to keep updating your skills. And so the reason I put off going back to college and getting my um, uh, master's degree is because I was raising two daughters, but it kind of worked out in my favor in one regard because I had a 20 year gap between. And so through that process, I was able to update um, a wide variety of skills at going back um, to school. And that's not necessary. You, anyone who just continually learns and grows, it's almost a requirement so that you don't get kind of expired in terms of your expertise and the tools that you're used to working with. Uh, You don't want to feel cornered into older technology and have a harder time moving up or moving across. So that's a piece of advice sprinkled in as well. Like make sure you continue to get if if you choose this field or any field in technology, sprinkle in some time to get certifications at various phases in your career because the technology will change and if you don't change with it you'll be expired (laughs) so is it safe to say that this is a field that is just going to be growing no matter like security it's just going to be growing and growing so the job market is pretty good here yeah i think so i think i think we'll be good for a long time at least 50 years or so so um, I know you wanted to talk about a trend in um, data analytics or data science in general that you saw regarding um, females and and gender in the workplace. So is it, what would you like to share that with that? Yeah. Um, so in terms of like challenges that I've encountered through my career, part of it, it was um, raising two daughters and the kind of family I wanted to have and the kind of mom I wanted to be. Um, and then the other part of it was um, that, you know, from my undergraduate degree, all the way through every job I've had, I've always been in the minority. Um, it's not well represented with women. And um, I think being in the minority 
uh, is something to be mindful of, but not something to scare off anyone because part of the reason I was drawn to this field is because either you have the skill or you don't. So, you know, having the perception of being in a minority is one thing, but when you have skills to back it up, that's just black and white. So it is one way to kind of get around some of the gaps if you just continue to stay persistent, keep growing your passion and your skill. And I would say, um, keep, keep using your voice. Um, and, and I think that most fields have a similar problem. So, so the, the lessons learned and, or the advice I'm sharing of, you know, stay focused on your skills and using your voice, I think can apply to all kinds of fields. Like my daughter's going into finance and she'll be in the minority there, but that's okay. It's another black and white kind of skill. If she's the best at her job, um, it's something that can easily be proven. Shifting into what advice would you have for a student or anybody at any age, let's say even a mid-level career shift, uh, where do they start? Are there any um, organizations at schools or even outside of schools to look into certificate? What, what's the starting point and what is the um, general salary windows that we're looking at for these positions? So a couple of different things like the that you're asking about. One is the career shifting. Um, it's never as easy, I think, when you're trying to shift careers. Um, I encourage it because it makes your life more interesting and it gives you things to learn and grow. Um, oftentimes when you're in transition and or shifting, you might um, hit a salary cap and or wall, but it's it's kind of like playing um, chess where you take a step over to the side and see an opportunity and then a step up. Um, so, so one thing to prepare yourself for in trying to make a shift is um, you might get a pay cut. You might kind of stay steady state with no growth for a few years. In in my past, I think it was definitely worth it um, because it kept my life more interesting, kept me engaged, it kept me excited about my job all the time. And then like, for example, moving from a DBA or a data engineer, moving into project management was interesting for me. I didn't make more money as a project manager. Oftentimes the people underneath me in the team that I was managing, they probably had higher salaries than me. But it was a stepping stone for me to then move into product management, to move into managing technology teams. And, and so um, be prepared for that, I would say. I don't want to discourage anyone because I think it was the right moves for me. Um, and I enjoyed it. Like I said, th the learning made it worthwhile for me. And then in terms of salary stages, one thing I will tell people is like, as soon as you graduate school um, and you get your first job, you're going to see steady growth for the, per for the, like, and, and considerable growth for the first three to five years. And oftentimes it gets a little bit stale unless you upskill and that, and if you become accustomed to, you know, $10,000 raise and a $20,000 raise the next year, and you get accustomed to that, there'll be a point where it, you're not going to be seeing that same rate of growth and that's okay. And that's natural. It's time to upskill and kind of sidestep and, or shift and, and reconsider. So as a youth, the other thing I would highly recommend is internships. Even if your internships are not paid or not paid to start with, it's really important to come to the table for your with your first um, real job, post degree um, job with experience in your field. It doesn't have to be the right. It doesn't have to be labeled as an internship either. If you're doing similar things or working even in the same space, there's like your internship phase, there's the, the um, honeymoon phase, your first three to five years where you're growing a lot and the company loves you. 
Um, companies definitely see those young kids as like, come to us, we'll help you grow, but we know you're going to have all the um, fresh mindset. They adore that. And then there's this phase, phase where you have to invest back into yourself to get to the next level and the next level. That, that was really what I wanted to ask you was, you know, what is data science? What is data analytics? You know, giving us a digestible definition and, and you did that. Thank you. And um, so we're going to sign off now, but is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, um, any bumps in the road or anything to maybe look out for, for anyone getting in the data science track? But I do want to... Um encourage everyone who's listening is to, you know, find your passion so that when you go to work every day, it's entertaining and energizing because you can definitely create that when you're doing what you love, it feels good every day and it doesn't feel like work and it makes you want to excel in your field, which will naturally lead to career growth and make you a happy person. Frazana, thank you so much for joining me today uh, and sharing your experience in data science. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Thanks so much for listening. If you have a job you want to learn more about, let me know and I'll create an episode for you. Contact me at hello at workuniversity.org. You can also get new episode announcements when you follow me on Instagram at work.university.